Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Steph. Um, today I'm going to be talking about, as you can already tell by the title, getting a hope Ugh, getting a hip replacement at the age of 26. Um, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of a background on why I'm getting a hip replacement and my condition. I have a condition called acetubular protrusion where um, so in the hip joint you have a ball in a socket and with acetubular protrusion the ball part of the joint <laughs> that's such a weird hand movement um, the ball part of the joint, so that's the head of your femur, is protruding into the socket, into the pelvic um, structure. So uh, it causes a lot of pain, it causes arthritis, which is what I have in my right hip joint. So that's why I need a hip, a hip replacement because that's really the only thing that's gonna fix the protrusion. Um, I've had steroid injections and, well, I've had one dose of steroid injection that only lasted about four weeks which is very small because it's meant to last at least you know six months i was told at the age of 25 which was in november 2017 that i need a full hip replacement and honestly when my consultants told me that i was quite shocked but um that's just the reality of things and that's really the only thing that's going to um give me back the quality of life that i should have because i like it, it does affect me a lot like the pain is very intense especially at night so it disturbs my sleep it limits my range of motion um it's, it's just it's really bad okay it's, it's bad enough to the point where i need a hip replacement today i'm just going to be discussing my experience and what i went through being treated as part of the nhs um in comparison to if i'd been getting this with private care um what it's like in the UK, you know, having to go through the whole process. And also, I just want to share this with other people who might be going through the same thing as me because when I was told that I needed a hip replacement, I was quite shocked, as I said, and I was looking for, you know, information and other people who might have gone through the same thing as me, but there's not like there's nothing on the internet. There's literally like I think I found three videos one of them was a guy in his mid to late 30s i think there was one girl in her 20s as well but she's from america so like i said i want to share an experience of what it's like in the uk and then i found someone else who made a video saying that he was going to be getting a hip replacement but that was it like there was no follow-up there was no other information or anything else. it's it's pretty you know it's not the information out there is not great so I want this to be able to help other people who might be going through the same thing um, and just to share my experience really because it's not every day you come across a 26 year old with an artificial hip. If you're interested in you know sharing this experience with me just stay tuned. I'm planning to make follow up videos. Um, so my surgery is actually tomorrow. It is the... what day is it today? It is the 12th of August. I should have known that because I know my, shirt, my surgery date is tomorrow. Um, my surgery is on the 13th of August, Monday. And to say the least, I'm fucking terrified. Sorry for swearing. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm so like scared. It's like my brain hasn't even accepted it yet, but I'll be fine and I'll like, I'll I have to be fine. First things first, what is it like going through the NHS trying to get a hip replacement? Um, so as I said previously, my um, doctor, not my GP, but my consultant, so he's a um, surgeon in my um, local hospital, in my NHS trust. I live in Surrey, so um, you, you'll be seen by someone in your catchment area. He um, told me that I needed a hip replacement and then I was put on the list. So there is a waiting list for that surgeon particularly. If I was being seen by a different surgeon, I would be on their waiting list. I think that's how it works. Um, so I was told in November and put on the list in November 2017. I didn't get a surgery date until June 
and the surgery was a month from the day that I was told. It was pretty frustrating because that's an awfully long time to wait, like six months before you're even told anything. And obviously for me, because like I am a lot younger, like I have a full-time job, like I have a life to plan, like I have things to take into consideration if I'm gonna be taking time off work, etc. But once I was told the date, even from then, there was so many changes, so many hiccups, so many like, oh, your consultant's not in clinic today, so you can't see him, or sorry, we had to change your date because he's on holiday, he's doing this, he's doing that. And I was just like, like, are you actually being serious? Um, but that's just the reality of it, like I said. Like, the NHS is great in some ways, but at the same time, it's a joke because from my experience, I didn't feel like I was taken seriously. Um, maybe partly because of my age as well. I feel like if I was more frail and older, I probably would have been more of a priority on the list. Um, but I feel like I really had to fight. Like I kept on calling, like relentlessly calling the clinic. Do you have a date yet? Do you have a date? Do you have a date? Like every month, like I would constantly just call and call and call to find out if, if there was any updates. Not sure if it helped or not. But then eventually my surgeon was changed last minute because the original guy um, had an accident and he couldn't perform the surgery. So they kept on pushing the date saying that, oh no, he's still not able to operate yet because of his injury. I don't know what the hell happened to him. Um, but thank God anyway, because the new surgeon that I have been assigned to, who is like, he's covering for this guy, um, was really, really nice. I met with him last week and I absolutely love him. And I've like kind of stalked him on Google as well. Um, read a bunch of reviews, really, really positive reviews about him. So I'm like, I'm happy with the surgeon that I've gotten in the end. So I guess it all worked out, but the process could have been smoother, I feel. Um, because even then I had to ask for someone else to do the surgery they were just willing to make me wait and I was like absolutely not like I'm not doing that in comparison to NHS treatment I would honestly advise if you can afford it just to go private um, I did do a bit of research on how much it would cost to go private because I was so frustrated with waiting for so long and um, with NHS um, it would cost I was looking up with the Notfield Health Clinic if you're from the UK um, you know what the Nutfield Healthcare is. Um, it would cost about £11,000 to get it done and they do offer like monthly payments and instalments um, of up to I think 11 months. You can pay um, the total costs across. That's a lot of money but at the same time like I said if you can afford it, if you can you know, if you're able to take out a loan, if you're up for doing that, that in my opinion would just be more straightforward because You've seen, you're seen for your consultation and then you have your surgery two weeks later in comparison to waiting at least six months. Um, so yeah, that would just be my opinion. Um, my advice if you can afford it and if you're living in the UK. If you yourself are going through the process um, or if you know anyone who is, um, just a few tips on like what to expect from the beginning to um, the actual point of having the operation done. For me, um, I was put on the list, like I said, in November 2017 and then I got an appointment for a pre-assessment in January 2018, so yeah, this year, January. And in that pre-assessment appointment, I was seen by an occupational therapist, I was seen by a physiotherapist as well, um, I had um, ECGs done, blood tests, urine tests. In that uh, pre-assessment day, I was also given uh, commode, I'm not sure, is it a commode? But basically it's like a chair thing to put over the toilet for when I come home. Yeah, I know, like it's sitting in my hallway at the moment and every time I have someone come over, they're just like, what is that doing here? Um, but yeah, it's so I can like use the toilet safely when I come home and they give you like a little CD, a CD-ROM, like who even uses those anymore? Like a little CD-ROM thing with information about the surgery, what to expect when you go into hospital, what to expect from after the hospital. Um, they give you a list of exercises to practice so you can know what to do after the operation. Um, so I'll be showing you guys like all of that as I'm going through it post-op, um, like me trying to walk for the first time, 
um, doing my physio, all of that, and also when I come home as well. Um, they tell you that you're gonna have to be taking injections. I think it's daily injections, like anti-clotting injections to stop the risk, well not to stop, but to, to prevent the risk of deep vein thrombosis and clotting. Um, you also have to wear like special com um, compression socks as well to stop your um, legs from getting blood clots. Um, it's just like so many things, like also the risks as well, what to expect. Your legs may be different lengths afterwards. You might have um, ongoing pain in the site of the surgery. Um, oh, and the scar. So basically, uh, the first surgeon that I was seen by told me that he was going to make an incision like under my bum, just like under the cheek area and go in that way. Um, and the scar would be quite minimal and you wouldn't really be able to see it. Um, but then the surgeon that I'm actually being um, treated by now says he's using more or less the same technique but the incision site is going to be different and it's going to be um, like on the side of my um, hip like bump area and it's going to be like at least I think he said six to eight inches long which is quite big and he was just straight with me he was like bikini won't cover it it's not going to be pretty but that will allow me to have the best access to work on the hip properly. Um, so I've been also looking up like scar creams. I've gotten some scar cream um, that I'm gonna use afterwards. And yeah, I hope all goes well. Like I'm trying not to freak myself out too much. I mean, there's also a 5% chance that I'll never walk again and I'll be paralyzed. But I mean, I'll take those chances because like I said before the pain is so intense and it's just it's affecting like every aspect of my life as well at the moment so I really want to be able to train and work out like I want to I know I won't be able to do everything 100% but not being in pain all day every day and not being able to sleep I think would be nice you know I don't think that's too much to ask for that's just a little bit I don't want this video to be too long so I'm gonna like you know end it here but if you have any questions or any comments or anything just leave them in the comment section below if you're interested in learning more about my journey please hit the subscribe button and um yeah share this video with friends uh family members anyone that you think would be interested and follow me on instagram as well i'm very active on instagram I am going to be doing lots of stories, Instagram um, lives, everything just to capture this moment as much as I can. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.